What do you do and what, what you, where do you find the information you need about the people you need in order to actually find mediums? Okay. Then you have the fourth phase, which I would call the meeting. Okay. Essentially, you're in the meeting with the sponsor and you're selling your project. And like the final major phase is key account management, part of what we talked about yesterday, if you would remember. Okay. Do you have any questions? You see, like, hmm. no, just listening. Okay, so basically, this training will be following the idea of setting up a team. Who will be doing full time sponsorships? And we will be providing funding for a debate in field, right? I call it NGO so we can have generic term of reference for all kinds of societies and associations that promote debate. Of course, you have like high school clubs, university clubs, foundations, clubs uh, like associations that manage several different entities of debate and so on and so forth. Now, I believe that the, the bigger the organization is, the bigger the team. So we're looking at this team, right? What, what do you think this team should contain? You know? Um, like uh, the person who has a big network, the person who knows the concepts, a good accountant, a creative person. It's a bit complex, but sure. Keep going. Uh, well, it depends. It depends, as you mentioned, on the size of the team. If it's you could have a team of various sizes, and yes. you can outsource certain aspects of what you were saying. For example, the creative aspect, you can outsource it to a creative department. Now, but essentially, what you do need is people who are sociable. Okay, you need people who are outgoing. And maybe you need people that can sell. Surprisingly, these people aren't that hard to find. I mean, um, although you might think that you've never sold anything in your life, or you've never talked to someone asking them for money, it's not as hard as you think. Essentially, if you're well prepared, you just go and have a conversation. If you're not well prepared, you're going to go have a bad debate. <coughs> and if you really suck at it, you won't even get through the door, so it doesn't really matter. Now, this is this part. I would call it the front end of the team. Okay, you have the people who contact the sponsors, who talk to the sponsors and who actually go and sell the, uh, like sell the event and say, hey, this is the event, uh, please give us money. But then you're going to have another part, which is the back end team, right? Now the back end team is the people, are the people who do the following things. The back end team will make the presentation. The back end team will generate contacts. They'll find events for you. They'll maintain your website. Okay. They might even create programs or events. Now, if you look at it from this perspective, which is a very simplistic perspective of the whole aspect. These people will be the ones basically that will be doing your research. And research is very important. These people will be the ones who go out and sell your project. That's it. So you have people who talk, who are your front end, and people who don't talk, who are your back end, right? And this is what you need in your recruitment strategy. So, I'm going to flip this so we can talk about recruitment separately. Because we're going to try and cover like recruitment and finding sponsorships in the first hour and maybe the other or if you want to go faster and find other and talk about other topics we can do that too uh, and then have a break okay
Uh, okay, so now we recruit, right? And by the model I've been showing you one more time, we have the front end and the back end. Now, if I would ask you right now from the top of your head, what kind of people should be these people? I've told you there should be sociable and outgoing, okay? Is it fundamentally necessary? Is it, is it, I think it's fundamentally necessary for them to talk to people, to be able to communicate efficiently, okay? Anything else can be trained from that point of view. But they need certain, uh, some certain abilities that you find maybe harder in, in most people. What do you think would those be? In my perspective, it would be easier to train the back end people, maybe. You would train the back end to sell? No, no, no. I mean, like, I would rather look for people in the front end that, that have some experience or, like, are more willing to do something else than try to train okay. people that have no experience, that don't really want to do something like that. No. It depends on what you're, what you're doing here. And there's no training involved between these two. Because these people will be generating the information. Mm -hmm. What these people have to do is understand this information and move it forward yeah. in ways these people can't. So in Aspire, I was talking yesterday about the other NGO, NGO I work in Aspire. I manage an eight-people team, right? And we do sponsorship. Mm -hmm. Of these eight people, I have three front-end people and five backend people. These people never meet the sponsors. Okay? The reason they never meet the sponsors is none of them live in Romania. So I have one in France, one in Spain, one in England, one in Germany. Okay? And they're all Romanians, essentially. But they're, they're, they're moved abroad. My problem is that I need people in Bucharest who can go to, to meetings in Bucharest. So I have like three people, out of which only two of them live in Bucharest. One has a full-time job, and the other, the third one lives in Brasov, which is like 300 kilometers away. But amongst the, the nine of us, we did raise around 60,000 euros in a year. Okay, for me, it's good. Yes, ma'am? I have a question. Sure. I'm sure that you will answer them. I mean, but, like, you would have answered, but still, how do you keep them motivated? Oh, that's a different discussion. Okay. But we'll talk about it, but that is a whole different discussion. Okay. Okay, because that is a different perspective. Okay. Um, in this system that we use, this is a um, this is a management system. Okay, this is where I have like my direct responsibility is to keep them motivated and share tasks equally among them, so they don't feel overburdened, overburdened, okay, or stressed or demotivated. Whereas if I work in like uh, a debate NGO society, you might only have three people doing this, and they motivate each other. Okay, they follow each other and you have one common goal. It's much easier to work for one event than working for five events. This is like for five events. Okay. Um, but back to your question. So these people never meet the sponsors. But what I do have them do is I make them do the presentations. Right? I make them budget. I make them evaluate applications. Okay. For example, we're providing a program, and in this program, you have 50 allocated seats. Right. So you have 50 people max in the program. Out of these 50 people, you will have 20 freebies. So the program is with a fee, like 290 euros, for example, is the fee of the program, and I give 20 free seats uh, to 20 people who might apply. And I need someone to evaluate their financial request applications. So I'll have the backend people do that because they're in the best position to do that. Uh, why do I differentiate so much between the two? Because we're talking about different types of time consumption, right? I'd rather have these people on call so I can send them to meetings whenever and wherever than have everyone on call and not do the presentations, okay? So I can't have these people doing presentations and doing research and sitting like days on end uh, researching stuff because I need them to go out and meet people. 
But these people from the backend team will have enough time or can maybe distribute their time to do the research I need them to do. My first recommendation would be that you recruit these people from your organization. Now, the problem here is you can outsource these people from the back end company. You cannot outsource the front end company. Right? And then let me tell you why. Because you have these people who go out and they sell your debate program, they sell your debate event. These people need to be passionate. Because they fundamentally need to be persuasive. Okay. As I was telling you in the last seminar, it's not companies who sponsor you, it's always people who sponsor you. Okay. And this is something I really like you guys to remember. It's not, I'm not meeting with Ericsson, I'm meeting with uh, Jorge from, which is the CSR chief department from Ericsson, and he is the one who will be giving me money. It's never about Ericsson giving me money. Okay, but except for being passionate and maybe being from your organization, and because they need to be passionate and from your organization so they understand what's going on in your organization. You can't have people selling something they don't understand because they won't be able to sell it to the best extent. Unless they're like pathological or something. Okay. So what else should these people have that maybe these people don't need? The front end people. What should the front end people? What would you add to this list of qualities? Or Actually, they need to uh, basically have a rough skin. Exactly. They need a very rough skin. You, you will hear no more than you will hear yes. You will hear no, I could statistically tell you that you will hear no and maybe 95% of anyone you approach. Okay? So if I if we raise 60,000 euros in Romania, and this is 5%, this is like you need someone who is very determined. So you think like determination and rough skin. And rough skin is maybe an accurate or like a metaphor. It's highly frustrating and highly demotivating to contact 50 sponsors and hear 49 notes or 44. So, right. so these people need need a very good understanding of this process, right? There's this process, and they need to, to understand that this is how things work. After that, they need to be determined enough to pursue their targets until they like get the money they need. Because there are a lot of people who, after they get maybe get a 5,000 euro sponsorship, they might say, oh, I've done my part. And this is part about how you motivate the team, the team motivation. You have these people who say, hey, I, but I already got like 10,000 euros, and why do people that haven't gotten anything get the same treatment like I do? And I, the answer is, well, you were lucky, and maybe they weren't. Um, what else? I'm like, sorry for my writing, it's very bad. They need to have like a neat look, like they need to be presentable. Yeah. They need to be presentable. Okay. But not necessarily like super yeah, presentable. They could they need to be well spoken, of course. So people who understand that they need to control their behavior and can control their behavior and their, especially their temper, because you might encounter people who are very bad, like very annoying and very evil. <laughs> I have to, I've met evil people in my sponsorship quest, and you, you really shouldn't get pissed off when you shouldn't get like sad or anything while in the meeting. So you might, anyway, you might have people start crying in meetings with sponsors and you really don't want that. Okay, so we have a profile. Could someone like, do you have people like this in your organization? Yeah. You do? Do you have people like this in your organization? 
we don't have that many people right now. Anyway, how, many, so. how many people do you have? Well, we used to be five even in the mainstream. So now we're like two, three maybe. Oh, okay. So let's, let's do this. We'll finish up this model. And then we'll, uh, we'll like, we're going to go pretty fast. And then we're going to do some maybe how you can adapt this situation to a three people team and not an eight people team or 15 people team. The whole number of people in this partner in an organized team is around 30. Like in three departments doing marketing, like marketing programs and funding, right? And I have the marketing, I want to outsource the presentations to the marketing team. I have insourced the content of the presentations to my backend team. And I have uh, asked the marketing team to promote sponsors the way I want them to be promoted. And that really didn't work out for me. But we'll talk about that a little bit later. And we go back to, to sum this up. You need people who are very passionate a very good understanding of what they do, who are determined, and who many of these things can be trained with a prop with proper leadership. So you have a good strong leader in your organization and then just to motivate people, like a really good leader, put him on the sponsorship team, put him in charge of administering the sponsorship team because these people will really feel bad. So <laughs> you'll really feel sad and you need strong motivators for them. Now the back-end people do something essentially and crucially important if it's done right. They do background research. Okay, and this is super important. As you do, you go like to presentations or you go like to meetings, and you have this maybe presentation, right? I will show you a presentation. Uh, what is this? This is good. Uh, so you have this presentation, right? But what you need to know is a little bit more than that. The question is, how do I prepare for a meeting? Okay, how would you prepare for a meeting? One question. Sure. How, you, how do you recruit them, um, the persons uh, in your team? Just uh, they send you a CV. So I'll finish. I'll finish oh, with that. Okay. okay. So uh, so you have. <laughs> so I'll finish with that. Why is this not working? Why is this not working? Open this. Okay. So I'll finish with that so you get a good view of what these two kinds of people need and then we'll talk about how you can recruit them. This is the presentation I got from the marketing department, right? And this guy is on the sponsorship team, who's right on the front of the presentation. And what the, the marketing team did was design this whole background and the whole layout of everything, but this text is made entirely by the sponsorship team, okay? Because technically you recruit these people with some s skill of sale, right? So maybe they have an idea how they should sell things. So they should have an idea on how they should write things in order to make them more attractive. I'm gonna walk you through this presentation very shortly. What do you see here on this page? What do you think is relevant on this page? Can you, what, can you understand what it says there? It's like the plan. Okay, but what is relevant? What makes this page be a good page? That it's uh, like kind of short and it has bullet points of everything that okay. like simplicity, I guess. Any other ideas? Oh, this is the first slide, like it gives an, like an outline of what you will be talking about. Okay, Tony? Mm, yeah, I'd say it's a good structure. Get the, the key the key areas what you're gonna talk about. Mm. Okay. And yeah, I know that What you about now? <laughs> is it worse or is it better? I think it's worse. worse. It's worse. Now, this point of discover, develop, connect is something you put like in the middle of the page to attract the attention of the person who's reading it. 
And even if they're just skimming over the page, this is a very interesting strategy. If they're skimming over the presentation, or we want to read it, they will see there's something different here, they will stop. They will see that these are your three principles. Okay? This is like a very small tips and tricks on how you can make the presentation work. And then you have like, I don't know, you go just go into the, in the programs. This is a bit full from my opinion. Mm -hmm. But this is a bit, this is a lot of, this is the former slide. And this slide, I think the slide is a bit full of information, but it's like, it's okay. Because they have details about the three programs. Very important is that you add pictures with people in your presentation because sponsors react to people, people who are smiling, people who have shown a positive vibe into motion. And they say, hey, this seems to be a good program. People seem to be happy. Because I think, well, my personal opinion is that fundamentally people don't care what they invest in as long as they invest in the happiness of other people. So if your program makes people happy, then it might be a good program. This is like the location, those are testimonials from former participants, which is something very interesting to read. And of course you make the background different, so the background of the testimonials, so hey, that's the testimonial. And you pick the good testimonials, <laughs> you don't pick the bad testimonials. Uh, okay, I had a wonderful week, this is the transformation experience for me. The most valuable thing I learned that inspires people I'm not referring to friends, Although many of them beca uh, become my friends, but to those people who made me think, decide, and act, I discovered that people who do more, they have to do more. It's like the, those kind of testimonials. And you have the three bullet points. Everything that is in your page of contents has to be in your presentation. If it's not in your presentation, it sucks. Because sponsors will be asking, okay, so you have this bullet point here, where is it? You have the three, discover, develop, and connect. If you do things in threes, people are more likely to remember them. Right, so this is like a very basic word trick and basic, you know, you do it in speeches too, right? Yeah. Do you do it in speeches? 